We're feeling more comfortable when it comes to flying a drone, and we really enjoy it. We just bought a new drone with enhanced features. Join us as we learn how to fly our new Holy Stone HS720E. Hi, this is Marcy and David Lynn, the Just a Little Further blog and website crew, and we're on the road again. We'd been thinking about getting a drone for years. When we were sailing around the world on Nine of Cups, we thought having a drone would have a number of advantages. We could get some great footage of cups under sail. We could reconnoiter a harbor or anchorage prior to entering. We could examine the rigging up close without having to climb the mast. And maybe it would even help spot all those coral heads in some of the South Pacific atolls we visited. But then reality entered the equation. The winds at sea are rarely less than 15 knots, way too much for a small drone to handle. All those pesky stays and shrouds that hold the mast up would be difficult for the drone to avoid on takeoffs and landings. And drones only have a flight time of 30 to 45 minutes and a range of only a few hundred meters. We decided a drone just wasn't practical on a sailboat. We changed our minds when we bought our van and began our trekking lifestyle. We bought a Holy Stone HS720 and got some great video footage of our van blue and some terrific videos of us trekking. Since then, Holy Stone has come up with an improved version of the 720, the HS720E, also known as the HS105. It has a greatly improved image stabilized video camera and an updated app. We finally broke down and bought one. This is the new drone and the remote. Let's start by taking a look at the remote and how it operates. First, there are two joysticks. In the default mode, the left stick controls the altitude and the direction of the drone. Press the joystick up and the drone climbs. Press it down and the drone descends. If I push the joystick to the right, the drone rotates clockwise. And alternately, if I push it to the left, the drone rotates counterclockwise. The right joystick controls the horizontal motion of the drone. By pushing up, the drone moves forward. If I push down, the drone moves in reverse. If I push it to the left, the drone moves sideways to the left, and conversely, if I push the stick to the right, the drone moves sideways to the right. If the drone is flying any direction but directly away from you, the right joystick can be confusing at first. You really have to imagine you're in the drone's pilot seat, and you're facing the direction that the camera is aiming. This button locks and unlocks the drone motors. When you first turn the drone on, it won't fly until the motors are unlocked. A short press on this button unlocks the motors. The drone motors will rev up a couple of times to let you know it's ready to fly. After landing, press this button for three seconds and the motors will stop and lock. You can also kill the motors in an emergency with this button while the drone is flying. Say, for example, the drone flies into a crowd of people. Just be careful though, this turns the drone into a very non-aerodynamic rock. This button has a couple of functions. A short press will turn the LED landing lights on or off, and a long press will change the drone from high speed to low speed and vice versa. This button controls the camera. A short press will take a snapshot, and a long press will start or stop the video camera. This knob adjusts the camera angle from horizontal to vertical. The controller also has a bunch of artificial intelligence, or AI functions, and this really helps to make the drone easy to fly. To start with, there's a takeoff and landing button. When the drone is on the ground and you push the takeoff button, the drone will take off and hover about four feet off the ground. When the drone is in the air and you push the button, the drone will automatically land itself. Probably the most important AI function is the return to home, or RTH, function. If the communication link fails, or the battery reaches a low state, 
or I push the RTH button, the drone will automatically return to the spot from which it took off. An extremely handy tool, especially for us newbies. Once the return to home function begins, the drone will rise to about 100 feet, then fly itself directly above the landing spot and descend and land. Before you can fly the drone, the battery has to be charged. The charger needs a 2 amp USB adapter and it takes about 6 hours to fully recharge it. The battery slides in and snaps securely into the bottom of the drone. A micro SD card is used to record photos and videos. It doesn't come with the drone, however, and has to be purchased separately. You can use the camera without an SD card by streaming the image data directly to your smartphone, but I found the streamed video quality to be quite choppy without a card. Alright, now it's time to power up the drone. If this is the first time the remote is used with this drone, we need to pair the two. To pair them, we start by holding the propeller lock button down while turning the remote on. It should make two beeps. Next, turn on the drone by pressing its power switch. After a few seconds, the drone will complete its initialization and pair itself with the remote. The drone should beep twice. The flashing compass icon indicates that the drone's compass must be calibrated. This is done in two steps. First, hold the drone horizontally and rotate it 360 degrees three times. When completed, the green lights will flash. Next, hold the drone vertically with the camera facing up and rotate it another three times. When completed, the compass icon will disappear. Also, the forward lights in the drone will turn solid red and the rear lights will turn solid green. By the way, I watched another video on flying a drone and I was led to believe that I had to rotate my whole body 360 degrees to calibrate the compass. Not only does this look silly and make you dizzy, it's totally unnecessary. There's one last thing to talk about before we go out and fly the drone and that's the smartphone app. Holystone has a great app that is available for either iOS or Android smartphones called the Ophelia Go app. Once it is downloaded, there are a number of options that can be changed to customize it, but initially I left everything in the default settings. The app has a lot more functionality and features than I'll ever use, but there are a few key features that I like and do use. Notice that the image on the screen is the view from the drone's camera. This is quite helpful when positioning the drone in the camera angle. This icon is the return home function. If you touch the icon, the drone will go into the RTH mode and return and land at the initial takeoff spot. This is the takeoff and landing icon. It works exactly the same as the button on the controller. If you press this icon, the drone will take off and hover about four feet off the ground. When the drone is in the air and you push this icon, the drone will automatically land itself. This is the multi-function icon. When selected, three more functions will appear. This is the follow me icon. Pressing this causes the drone to track and follow along behind you as you walk with the controller. Point of interest icon. Touching this icon will start the drone circling around a spot. The default radius is 16 feet, but you can change it if desired. This is what Holy Stone calls the headless mode. That term sounds a little ominous, but it's actually a nice feature. In the headless mode, the drone remembers the direction it was facing when it first took off. Then as the drone is rotated in flight, no matter which way it is facing, pushing the right joystick will make the drone fly in the same direction as it was originally facing. For example, if the drone was facing north when it first took off, no matter which way it is facing during its flight, pushing the right joystick up will make the drone fly northward. Likewise, pushing the right joystick down will make the drone fly southward. This is the coolest feature of all. It's called the Tap Fly feature. If you expand the map to full size, then touch this icon, you can draw a route on the map. When you're finished drawing the route and press the Submit button, the drone will follow the route you entered. Between the manual and the Ophelia app, it's confusing trying to figure out all the steps it takes to prepare the drone for flying. You don't have to do everything in the order given here, but this is how I set up for a flight. Turn on the drone and wait for the double beep. 
turn on the controller, then after the double beep, check to see whether the compass icon is flashing. If it's not flashing, skip to the next step. Otherwise, the drone compass has to be calibrated. This is where you rotate the drone three times horizontally, then three times vertically. The smartphone talks to the drone via the drone's Wi-Fi network. Go to the smartphone settings and connect to the Holystone EIS Wi-Fi network. This is a private network that connects the phone to the drone and doesn't require an internet connection. Exit the settings on your phone and then open the Ophelia app. Click on the button that says Enter Device. I found the next screen to be especially confusing and I just X out of it. Okay, let's go see if we can fly this thing. We have the automatic takeoff and landing feature, but I want to see if I can do it manually. Not too bad. Alright, now let's just take off and fly around a little while. Let's see if we can do it without losing it or crashing it. I know, I know, pride goeth before the fall, but at the risk of getting overconfident here, I'm beginning to think this is pretty easy. To put it through its paces, we took the drone to Red Rock Canyon, just west of Las Vegas. It's a beautiful area and drones are allowed. This is video footage taken from the drone. The image stabilized 4K camera takes much better video than the predecessor. This is the follow me feature. The images have lost that jerkiness that was so apparent in the earlier Holy Stone drones. This is the point of interest feature. I'm going to try to get it to circle me. It's a little off center, but it's not too bad. There are a few more things to do before you fly your drone. First, the FAA requires that you pass a free online test called the Recreational UAS Safety Test, or TRUST. This test is easy and takes about a half an hour. Second, you must register your drone before flying. Do a Google search on FAA drone registration and their site will pop up. Everything can be done online. The registration costs $30 and is good for three years. You are required to carry proof of registration when flying the drone, which you can print or have mailed to you. Once registered, you'll be issued a registration number. This number must be marked on the drone. You can engrave the number, write the number with a permanent marker, or use a permanent label. For a small fee, the FAA will print and mail permanent labels to you. Before you fly, make sure the area you are in allows drone flights. The FAA provides a free mobile app before you fly that will tell you whether your location is in a no-fly zone. Finally, there are some basic rules for flying. Keep the drone at an altitude of 400 feet or less. Keep the drone within your line of sight. Never fly near other aircraft. Never fly over groups of people. Never fly over or near emergencies or accidents. And never fly under the influence of drugs or alcohol. We hope you enjoy your drone. Happy flying. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click on the like button below. If you want to see more of our how-to, travel, sailing, road trips, and trekking videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We also blog and update our website regularly, so check us out at www.justalittlefurther.com. Bye for now.